For today's video, I'm doing another compilation, long format content video while I take a break from YouTube. I had a baby, I went back to work, and I need a break. But I also want to combine all of my series into long format kind of movies that are very, very long. If this is something that you're not interested in, you totally don't have to watch, but this is something that I really want to do personally because I have a lot of different series that I've worked on for like years now, I think almost four years and I just want them to all be in one video. I think it's fun. So for today's video, we're doing every Wreck This Journal page that I have ever done. All right, so the first page I decided to do was the Pour, Spill, Drip, Spit, Fling Your Coffee Here page. I knew I wanted to decorate this with markers, and since I know my markers bleed through the page, I decided to make a sketch on a separate piece of paper and cut out the prompt. After completing my sketch, I then went in with a black alcohol marker and started outlining everything. I had two problems with this. The first problem was that the marker was a little bit thicker than I intended, and it was really hard to get the fine details. You can see over here, I really messed the fingers of this, this hand up. Looks like it has broken fingers. I had a similar problem with the small fine details of the lip right there. Because this kept happening, I decided to just exaggerate the thick and thin lines and make it part of the art piece. And now to explain my second problem. These markers bleed very heavily, and that is honestly because I am using the quote-unquote wrong material. I'm using printer paper with alcohol markers. Usually with alcohol markers, you should really be using a thicker paper, but I don't want to buy the thicker paper. So for this page, as you can probably already tell, I decided to loosely follow the instructions. I did not take coffee or tea or anything and spill it on the page. I guess I could have. I just really honestly didn't think of it at the time. I was more interested in coloring and creating something with my markers. While I was coloring in the background, I realized that my hands were covered in markers. So I started smudging things and then I thought, oh, let me cover it up with pink. Why would you do that? This decision is so infuriatingly dumb when you consider the idea that I could have put coffee stains in the background. I added some highlights to the coffee and the drink, added some highlights to her lips and eyes, and put it in the book. I also outlined the window to the prompt just because I wanted it to look cohesive. And this is what the final thing turned out looking like. Overall, I'm pretty happy with it. I don't really like the background, I'll be honest, but the rest of it looks like pretty good to me. The next prompt is figure out a way to freeze this page. Because I plan to use my markers again, I also took a separate piece of paper for this prompt and traced the ice cube and cut it out. To come up with an idea for this page, I actually decided to ask you guys for help on the community tab. This is called the emoji challenge, I believe. You ask for three emojis and then incorporate them into a drawing. So for pick a starting face, you guys chose the winky face with the tongue out. For pick an activity, you guys chose dancing. And then for the outfit, you guys chose a fairy. So my character will be a dancing fairy making a winky face. I'm the type of person that likes to draw without really having a plan in mind. And that works out for me sometimes, and other times it doesn't. I was able to successfully incorporate the fairy and the winky face. The dancing, not so much. I was going for a dance pose, but I don't think it came across as well as I had hoped it would. I chose a light tan and a darker tan for some shading for the face. I started off by using the lighter tan color to color the face in. I then took the darker color to do some of the contours. So I contoured around the face, in the ear, around the nose, and the cheeks. I also added some dark blush, and by the end, she had a tad bit too much makeup on, but that's okay. She looks more like this, and she's going to look like this. When in doubt, blend it out. After going over everything with some tan and blending it out, I think the face started to look normal, so I moved on to the hair. I wanted the hair to come across icy, so to do that I used different colors of blue and gray and really did a lot of- a lot of blending was involved in this head of hair, but by the end I actually really liked the hair. I moved back to the face after it had dried and started on the eyes. I guess the eyelids hadn't fully dried, so I got some smudging around the eyes, but that is okay because I actually decided to do a snowy theme for the makeup of this person, this fairy. I took my white gel pen and made little balls of snow on the tips of her eyelashes, which I thought looked super cool. 
I then outlined her eyebrows and filled it in with some white gel pen so it looked like snow as well. I made the tip of her fairy ear, like the pointy ear, a snow color, and I also added snow highlights to her hair and made the tips of her hair frozen. Moving on to the, um, wings. I was not very sure how to draw fairy wings. I've never even drawn a fairy before, to be honest, and I just don't know if this was how they're supposed to look. I kind of like the way they came out. I like the blended look to them at the very least, but I'm not quite sure if I'm sold on the wings. I made the fairy's dress a darker, more vibrant blue. I guess it's like a royal blue color. I feel like it looks a little bit like a purpley, but it's it's mostly, it's mostly blue. Yeah, no, that that is blue. Is blue purple color blindness a thing? I feel like if if it is, I might I might have it because I feel like every time I look at this color blue in particular, I feel like it's just a little bit purple. Am I crazy? Doesn't that look like a little bit purple? It's blue, but it's also slightly purple. I don't know. What? I added some snow to the tips of the wings. I took the thinnest black marker that I have and just gave anything that looked like it needed a crisper line, a crisper line. I outlined the background snowflakes in black and then put a white gel pen on top so it looked like there was a drop shadow to it. I glued the page into the book, outlined the ice cube, and then colored it in so that it looked like everything fit together. And this is what the final thing turned out looking like. I am being dramatic, but this might be my favorite thing that I have ever drawn on my channel. Nay, it might be my favorite thing I've ever drawn in my whole life. I love it so much. I think it looks so cute. I just love her face. Ah, next page. Okay, so this page is scratch using a sharp object. So for this page, I went with the obvious. I went with a cat, but there's going to be a twist, guys. Just wait for it. So I'm sketching out a cat, and by the end, it just looked so, so sad. The, the cat just looked like he was, he was crying. What, what happened to you? What did they do? What was wrong? Meow. I just want to cry for this cat. He's crying on the inside. What did they do to you? What's wrong? Tell me. <laughs> I wanted the colors to be very scratchy, to kind of go with the scratch theme, so I did very short strokes and didn't color everything in all the way. I moved on to the face, and of course, with the black outline, everything smeared. <laughs> I added some white gel pen, and this is how it turned out. And I was ready to give up, throw in the towel, but then I saw it. No, 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 it can't be. It just can't. Is that who I think it is? You fool. It's you. It's always been you. In an attempt to have a second chance at fixing this cat, I decided to go with the outline that was underneath it and give the same kind of scratches and see if I could do a better job than the first cat. It turns out I couldn't. Uh, it's definitely not worse than the other one, but it's also not better. I would say that they are equally bad, so I will use both of them. I took an incredibly long amount of time to figure out the placement for these long lost lovers. I honestly wish I went with this one, it's so sweet. Once I figured out where to place the cats, I glued them down, and then I took my white gel pen and my regular pen and added some scratches to the page just to fill it out and make it look like it had some cat scratches. And this is what the final thing turned out looking like. I actually really like it, I think it's different, and it looks scratchy, you know? The shoutouts for this week are It's Totally K, Seen You, SS Challenges, Ellie underscore Arts 05, Jupiter Jane, Scarlet Pumpkin, Shira, Bryn, Emma Ray, and Shireen. Up next is color the entire page. So for this, I decided to do a blended rainbow. I know it's quite basic of me to use a rainbow, but honestly, I like rainbows and I wanted something simple to fill the page with, so this is what I went with. After I got my rainbow looking the way that I wanted it to, I took my white gel pen and started making outlines of flowers. I debated pretty heavily if I wanted to put these white outlines all over the page or just in some places. I opted for minimal white lines, but let me know what you guys think. Once I glued it into the book, I cut off the excess paper and I also gave an outline to the prompt. And this is what it turned out looking like. Like I said, I know this one is pretty simple, but I actually really like the way it looked. I think it's very... Nice, it's a, good, it's a good one. Okay, we're opening up our breakfast journal and I'm flipping to the page that says, Scribble wildly, violently, 
with reckless abandon. For this page, I decided to take out my rainbow fine liner pens. I have all different colors, there they are. And you can see this page is actually already scribbled on. That is because this book actually belonged to my sister Alina previously, and she never completed it. I added in those white papers because I realized I was getting it on the other pages. Anyway, so I'm just scribbling pretty violently, I'd say. Pretty recklessly. Not really having a rhyme or reason, except for this purple. I kind of went in a very specific pattern. But this, look at this blue. That's a mess. I just did random things there. And for the yellow, you couldn't really see it. I have to say, this prompt really challenged me as a perfectionist. I hate doing random things that don't make sense. I kind of liked the way it started to look, and then I did this. That. No. No, 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 no. No. See, this was my mistake. I was trying to really embrace the recklessness of this prompt. However, I am not a reckless person. I don't appreciate randomness, so I think I made myself hate this page. I did follow the prompt. Guys, I did it. And I don't like it. I'm so sorry. I hope you like it, though. We move from low lows to high highs. We are doing the do some rubbings with a pencil page, and I really enjoyed this prompt, so I decided to use a pencil, of course. Whenever I do faces and characters, I like to start with the eyes and then do the eyebrows. I am not someone that's like trained in art or anything like that. It's just what comes natural to me is to do the eyes first. I don't know if that's how you're quote unquote supposed to do it. As for the do something with pencil rubbings part of this prompt, you can see that I used my finger every once in a while and kind of rub the page to create a shading and shadows effect. So every time I'm rubbing the page, it's because I'm trying to blend in the pencils. And I'm also following the prompt. So right here, you can see I'm creating shading for the forehead and the top of the hair and then rubbing it. And I also take my eraser and then go back into the hair and create more highlights. Moving on to the lips. The mouth is half open, half closed. Is she about to say something? Is she not? We don't know. Keep him guessing, you know? What is wrong with you? I created a shade, sh shadowing, a shading. Wallet, watch, waffles. What am I saying? I redrew the jawline because originally I had it a little bit too wide, I felt like. And then I added shading to the sides of the face. Basically, the highest point of your face should probably be like the T-zone and your nose. And then, of course, once I was done, I rubbed it in. Up next is the shading for the neck. So I made sure to have shading underneath the chin area because your, your face is making a shadow there. So let's talk about the hair. The hair, I actually quite enjoyed. So I outlined each individual lock. Lock of hair. I don't like that word. Lock? A lock of hair? It sounds correct, but it doesn't feel right, you know? Does anyone say that? How do you refer to a group of hair? I'm getting upset. I don't like that word. Someone give me a different word. Concentrate. Come on. Nothing. Okay, back to the video. So I made the hair look like it was blowing in the wind. It did take a bunch of time to rub each individual lock of hair and my finger kind of hurt by the end. And then I also added some like highlights with the eraser. I added some eyelashes to the eyes and then of course created a little bit more of a highlight with the eraser. I did add some shading to the top parts of the eyes and these are some earrings that I added for her and I added a little line for her chin and this is the final thing. I actually really love this page. I'm very pleasantly surprised. Like I said, I don't really think of myself as someone who draws faces, but maybe that is changing. I did have a lot of fun doing this one. Up next, I'm going to be doing the cover this page in tape, create some kind of pattern with it. Cover my entire Rectus Journal page with these washi tapes. These are actually two of my favorite washi tapes. I know, groundbreaking news. Ow, I just made a weird whistling noise with my tongue. What are you doing? I enjoy washi tapes that have a little bit of a metallic color to them. I picked two washi tapes because I felt like one is just boring. Why not just pick two, you know? Let's do all of them. And they kind of match a little bit. Here you can see I'm cutting out a perfect triangle. And once that was done, I cut off the excess washi tape. And then I actually brought out this metallic gold paint. I have never used this before. It's brand new. It would not open. I tried several times to peel off this metal thing. It wouldn't come off, so I had to stab it. 
And it's actually, it looks quite nice. When I painted it on, it's a little bit transparent. So I did have to put a couple of coats. It did end up looking pretty shiny and pretty nice, I have to say. I don't know if having two coats of metallic paint is typical, but I mean, it looks pretty nice. I also re-outlined those two boxes and I actually really enjoyed this page. I know it's quite simple, but I think I like the way it looks. I love the colors. I like how it brings everything together. I like how it's metallic and shiny. And now I have my favorite washi tapes forever memorialized in my reckless journal. On to the next page. We're doing float this page. Float this page is actually right next to my favorite page. So I really wanted to make sure nothing was going to bleed through and ruin that other page. So that's why I took out my printer paper and copied over the design exactly to that. For this, I went to the community page. We voted for a dog in a bikini on vacation. For this page, I will be drawing a dog in a bathing suit on vacation. Of course, when I think of a dog, I think of my own dog, Maurice, the squishy that I made. He's a mint dog with some paint on him. He also has an ice cream cone that's made out of paint. You can see here, I'm starting off with a greenish color and then I actually went back in with a light blue color and covered over that light green to create a mint color. Oh, I tried to make the bow here. I didn't like the bow, so I just erased it. I added in the pupils for the eyes. I used my fine liners to color the rainbow iris. So here you can see I'm coloring in what looks like a donut, but do not worry. Maurice will still have some form of his ice cream cone. After I fully colored in the donut floaty, I added some shading, and I actually really like the way the shading came out right here. Ooh, nice. I also colored in his tail and his stomach with the mint color, and then added the paint splats. Moving on to the drippy paint that is around this donut looking floaty toy. I just filled in all the random paint spots. This is kind of like the ice cream cone that goes with Maurice, so I was modeling it after that. I also made sure to take a darker tan color and create that grid stripe kind of checkered thing that is on his cone, his ice cream cone. I colored the bathing suit pink because pink and green are kind of opposites, I don't know. And then I did the water, you can see it ran out of ink. So I switched to a darker blue and that one, wait for it, ran out of ink. So then I switched to another dark blue and that one did not run out of ink. Huh. I was shocked how quickly all of these markers ran out of ink. Cause you guys, if you follow my channel, you know I kind of just purchased these markers. I did color over with blue very lightly parts of Maurice. So like his legs, parts of the paint, parts of his tail, so that it would really look like Maurice was floating in the water. My idea behind this was to make Maurice and the whole thing a floaty toy, like a blow up floaty toy. Get it? Cause you're supposed to float this page. And I, I drew a floaty toy that goes in the, the pool. Like like a pool floaty. <laughs> okay, anyway, so to make it look more like this was a floaty blow up toy for a pool, I took my white gel pen and added a bunch of highlights. And I mean a bunch. Like I added highlights all over Maurice, all over his face, his ears, places that you wouldn't normally have highlights if this were a normal dog. This is in fact not a normal dog. He's a floaty pool toy. Did I say that enough? This is what the final thing ended up looking like. I know it looks a little strange because Maurice looks like he's an actual balloon, but just know that was what I was going for. Okay, so here's the front of my reckless journal. I'm flipping to the tongue painting page, eat some colorful candy, lick this page. My sister Alina actually already did this when she previously owned this book. She licked it. I find this really gross and I will not be licking the page. Instead, I will be drawing a person that is licking something. In this case, this girl will be licking a lollipop. If you're new here, I don't exactly follow the Reckless Journal prompts quite the way Carrie Smith may have intended them. I just loosely interpret them. I kind of just take a word from the prompt and then draw something about it usually. And I made use of that circle by also drawing a mouth with a lollipop. After finalizing my sketch, I took out my Micron fine liners and quickly outlined my sketch. After the sketch had been outlined, I then took my eraser and erased all of the pencil marks. And now we are ready for Alley Art Art Markers. A repetitive name, but actually I like the markers. They were like $30 on Amazon and that's a Posca paint pen. Get rid of that. Okay, story time. You're gonna see me put my left hand out to receive a kiwi of death. 
So to tell this story, it's gonna require some background information. So I am one of four kids. So my mom has four kids. She frequently will like mix up things about us. Totally not her fault. Totally comes with the territory of having four children. No blame on my mother. I love you, mom. Okay, so that's just the context. I'm 26 years old. And two years ago, I drank a pure mango smoothie. It was delicious, but I ended up with an allergic reaction to it where I, like, my throat hurt. Like, I felt like I had strep throat for, like, a week. And we figured out that I'm allergic to mangoes. I called my mom, and she's like, oh, yeah, that was you. I, I forgot you were the one that was allergic to mangoes. I was just thinking, maybe my mom just doesn't buy mangoes, maybe she doesn't like it. Turns out she just knew one of her kids were allergic to it and just axed it out of the grocery store list, and that's why I had never tried it. Fast forward to the kiwi incident. My sister Alina goes, hey, I've never eaten a kiwi. And I go, me either, I've never eaten a kiwi, that's so weird. So Alina buys a kiwi, and we go, let's try it. I try the kiwi, my throat immediately starts hurting really badly. Just like the mango incident. And then I asked my mom and I say, Mom, am I allergic to kiwis too? And she goes, oh my gosh, that was you. <laughs> Mystery solved, guys. I genuinely did not know you could even be allergic to something as random as a kiwi. I thought that that was not even possible, but apparently it is possible. So if your mom doesn't buy things often, it could be because you're slightly allergic to it. If I ever have more than three children, I have to write their allergies down on separate pieces of index cards and then give it to them when they're adults. Because I know myself, I am just like my mom. I will mix everything up and just be like, oh, it's one of you. And no one knows. And then you have 26 year olds walking around that don't know what they're allergic to. Another reason this may have happened is because my sister Alina is severely allergic to nuts. So I feel like all the focus goes on that because everyone else's allergies to things are so minor that they just don't even matter. You know what I mean? Like Alina is the kind that she needs like an EpiPen to walk around with. She gets like hives from it being in the air. Like that one is so bad that by comparison, if your throat hurts when you eat a mango, people just go, ah, you're not even allergic. Anyway, that was all a roundabout way of saying that I am slightly allergic to kiwis, allegedly. And this is basically finished up. I'm adding the finishing touches, just adding my signature and some highlights. I also rewrote the prompt tongue painting on top so that I could remember what the purpose of this drawing was. And here is what the final thing turned out looking like. I'm actually very happy with the way this girl turned out. I think her space buns look really fun. I like her pink hair. I am really happy that I added that green mouth. I feel like it adds something, and I like that I incorporated the circle. I kind of wish I made her eyes green. That's my only regret, but I do like this one. For this next page, it's the create a non-stop line, and it gives you a starting location. So I took out my Prismacolor colored pencils, and I kind of knew exactly what I wanted to do with this page from the moment I saw it. I know I've seen a lot of people with their notebooks do this kind of doodle. The way you draw this, it's basically like that game Snake. It's just one long line and you can make all different kinds of designs, squiggles and rectangles, whatever you want. The only rule is that the line can't overlap with itself. If you're looking for a new way to create doodles that are just mindless and very relaxing, this is definitely a surefire way to create something that looks cool every time. It kind of reminds me of a brain, but I kind of like it. I also kind of wish I used my fine liners because then it would have been darker, but I do like the way this turned out. Moving on to our next prompt, we have throw something, a pencil, a ball dipped in paint. So I decided to throw a marker and I quickly got bored of this and felt like it wasn't really doing anything. So I just decided to take out a whole new piece of paper and incorporate that target into my drawing. So you can see right here, I'm drawing a hand first, and this is going to have a lot of perspective going on. So the hand is closer to the you as the, the viewer than the face is. And you can see this girl is holding something and concentrating pretty hard. She's actually holding a bow and arrow and the arrow will go into the target. I was having a lot of issues with the perspective with the hand versus the arm. So I just decided to cover that up with some hair. Is this a bit of a cop out? Yes. Do I care? I don't care what people say when we're together. Sorry, love, but I don't really care. One Direction said that. 
Yes, her hand is a little bit wonky and her it looks a little bit large compared to the rest of her. But that's kind of like the perspective of it, like her hand is closer to you. I don't know. Anyway, I outlined it in black, I erased, and now we're ready for some markers. I am seriously considering getting the skin tone Ohuhu markers because she looks so orange. It's fine. She looks like she just sat in a tanning booth for 11 years and came out looking like an orange. And then I also colored her hair this blonde color. I actually think the blonde hair looks very good with the tan skin. She looks like a surfer. She doesn't look like a bow and arrow ist ersh per what am I saying? What's the noun to describe someone that uses a bow and arrow? I know this. Oh my gosh, it's an archer that was so dumb. Ah, yes, an archer. She doesn't really look like an archer. She doesn't really look like a Katniss Everdeen type of deal. But you know what? She, she does archery. Okay, guys, and this is her target. Is she aiming in the complete opposite direction as the target? Yes. Yes. Yes, she is. But that's okay. Maybe there's another target behind this target that she is aiming for, okay? I took my fine liner and outlined it very loosely. I thought that made it look cool. Added some highlights and of course the numbers to the target. I also added the prompt back into the page and put in some white gel pen. And then I put it into the book and this is what the final thing turned out looking like. I am very 50-50 on this page because I really like her face and her hair, but her hand just looks like it's not attached to her body. It just doesn't look right. I still like it though. Up next, we have fill in this page with circles. My sister Alina did start it. And I have these circles that were actually gifted to me. They came in a scrapbooking kit. And man, these were a good gift. I mean, I do not scrapbook that often, to be completely honest with you. But I've always wanted to get into scrapbooking. But just the, the concept of having these plastic circles that you can use for stencils whenever you want. That alone is groundbreaking. So I finally broke out my circle stencils and created all these different circles. And then I took my markers and you can see I'm coloring them in with all different colors. I believe I used all of the colors of the rainbow? Red, Roy G, Biv, yes, yes. I have all of the colors of the rainbow and I'm coloring in these circles. Very psychedelic, colorful. On the outsides, I'm kind of making them darker. On the insides, they're lighter. And that is because I'm actually making these circles for a specific reason. Do, do you see it? Do you know what it is? No. It's a gumball machine. My idea is that you're inside a gumball machine and you're looking around at all of the gumballs. Or maybe it's what your vision is if your face were smushed up against the glass of a gumball machine. I like that better. Either way, I'm very happy with the way this one turned out. I like that it's very like shiny and it looks like yummy. It like makes you wanna like eat. I'm flipping to the page, climb up high and drop the journal. Sounds dangerous. I'm the most uncoordinated person that I have ever met and I am very risk averse for good reason. Safety first, guys. I will not be climbing anywhere. Instead, I will be sending defenseless animals into the sky. Have a safe flight, anyone but me. I'm taking out my Micron fine liner and outlining all of the pencil markings that I have just drawn. After I finished going over all of the pencil marks, I took out my eraser and erased them. You gotta really shake that, shake that out. I think we're all clear. And ready for our Cali Art art markers, the most repetitive name on earth. I may never get over it, but I do like these $25 Amazon markers. I took out two lighter brown colors and colored in each of the baskets that these animals are sitting in. The idea is that all of these animals are racing up to the top of maybe a mountain, presumably, and they are going to drop the book. <gasps> up next, I'm using this blue color for the background, and of course, my alcohol marker ran out of ink halfway through. Don't be mad at it. It's not its fault. He doesn't mean it. Honestly, this is just kind of the way it goes with alcohol markers. They run out of ink very quickly. I really did not have any other alcohol markers that were even close to the one on the right side. So it kind of just is what it is. Different colors. <laughs> After that, I colored in all of the hot air balloons. This one's pink and yellow. This one's green and purple. And this one is red and pink. Weird color choices were made here, guys. 
There's also some really small hot air balloons that I will fix later. I colored in this hot air balloon, which had a different pattern. I really liked it, which is why I'm pointing it out. And then I moved on to the animals. This is supposed to be a hamster, but I think it kind of looks like a corgi a little bit. I mean, yeah, I guess. The raccoon is probably my favorite. I think he looks really cute. <laughs> I made the bunny a light tan color and colored the wreck this journal that this bird is carrying, as well as this bird up here with some purpley pink colors. For the snail, I used tie-dye colors in honor of Marge. If you don't know who Marge is, this is her. She's a squishy. I'm taking out my 132 pack of Prismacolor colored pencils, and we're going to be shading this piece. I think most of you guys know by now that shading is usually my favorite part of any piece. I have been really loving just putting my alcohol markers down first as a base color and then adding my colored pencils on top of that. Alcohol markers just make a really good base color for my pieces and then adding those colored pencils on top gives it extra dimensionality and makes everything so much more fun and relaxing. I also feel like the colors just come out better with a base color down. You'll notice that I'm coloring quite messily. I kind of just color whatever and don't really do it too neatly. That is because I use a colored pencil blender after the fact, so I just get all of my colors down and then blend it all out. That approach to shading is not without its mishaps and mistakes. For example, when I decided to start shading the bird, not this bird, but the bird up here, I did this. My colored pencil blender broke. It was already so small, so young, so fragile, so much more to give. Goodbye, my friend. It's okay, I just sharpened it and it was fine. I just hold my pencils so harshly. Like I really have a strong grip on them. They suffer as a result. They break a lot of the times. Really, I just need to loosen my grip, but I can't. Can't get a grip. <laughs> taking out my white gel pen to add some highlights to the eyes, the nose, the tongue, anywhere I feel like needs some shine. Needs some shine. I don't even know what I'm saying, guys. I don't know what that means. This is what the final thing turned out looking like, and I have to say, I really like this page. It feels like it has a story. All of these animals are racing to the top of a mountain to see who can drop this book first, which is just a ridiculous concept and makes no sense. I don't know why they're trying to desperately drop a book, but conceptually I'm on board with the competition. Up next, I'm flipping to the page that says, write one word over and over. I'm taking out my acrylic paint markers by Artistro. There are a bunch of different colors and I like to write with them. For this page, I decided to write one word. Get it? Because the prompt says write one word over and over again. Rather than taking the time to choose a single word for this page, I used the phrase one word for three reasons. The first reason is I'm extremely indecisive and it feels like this huge choice to pick one word. There are just so many words out there and it would take me an indescribable amount of time to actually choose one that I was happy with. Reason number two kind of relates to that. What does the word mean? What does it mean to me? Do I have to explain it to everyone? Why did I choose this word? So much pressure. Reason number three is that I thought using one word as my word was more creative. It's probably not. I very intentionally do not look up other people's Wreck This Journal pages because I don't want to be influenced by their decisions, so I truly have no idea if using one word is very common or not. There are just so many words out there, and this was way simpler. Up next, we're flipping to the page that says, Stand here, wipe your feet, jump up and down. Instead of taking out my bare feet and jumping up and down on this thing, I have decided to interpret this prompt a little more loosely. I took out my Micron Fineliner and went over all of my pencil marks and made sure I got the 
outline to the shoe correct. Yes, her left leg may be a tad bit too thin. I acknowledge that now, but I was generally satisfied and erased the pencil marks. After that, I took out my alcohol markers to give a base color to the whole drawing. Something I've been really interested in recently is using unexpected colors for shading. For example, on this sock, I used bright pink for the shading, which makes no sense. I also used bright pink on the legs, which makes no sense. And on the laces, which makes no sense. You may hate this, that's okay, we can agree to disagree, but I love it. Yeah, I like that. I do change my mind every five seconds though, so we'll see if I like it in a month. I went for a pink and green theme. I was honestly just trying to design some shoes that I personally would like to wear. I took out my scrapbooking circles. These were a gift, the best gift I've ever received because they make perfect circles, and I colored that in yellow. I like this. I should have left it as is. Put it in the book, I outlined the prompt, and then I said, it needs another circle. I don't know why I did this. It looks terrible. I don't like the second circle at all. I hate the color. I hate the size of it. I hate the position of it. Tell me you're dramatic without telling me you're dramatic. Up next, we're taking out my colored pencils. I don't know why I'm showing you the process of me picking them up in such a strange way, but we are switching to a yellow background. I'm so sorry, things will never be the same. I originally did this drawing at the end of April, but I didn't add these colored pencils until this week. So I really just decided to use the colored pencils to emphasize what was already going on in the drawing and make things look a little bit more three dimensional. I'll stop. I added the finishing touches to this piece with my colored pencils and this is what the final thing turned out looking like. I really do like this piece, but I have to say I really don't like that smaller circle. I really wish I had just left that yellow circle, but overall, this is an okay page. And we're flipping to the page that says, drip something here, ink, paint, tea, close the book to make a print. Taking out, or should I say rolling out, some neon paints, as well as some printer paper to protect the other pages. And I will be dripping these neon paints randomly onto the page. I had no plan for this. I was not trying to create anything specific. I was just embracing the idea of dripping paint randomly onto the page. By the time I got to the purple color, I was sure this was not going to make anything cool. But I pressed the pages together. I really gave it a good hit. Some nice pats. I think, I think that's enough. And now it's time for the grand reveal. Yes. I thought it created something really cool and it looked like something to me. I won't say what it is yet. Here comes the regret. I did add some extra drips of paint to the bottom because I thought the green wasn't colorful enough. I pulled the page apart and realized this was a mistake. I didn't really like the way it looked the second time, but I dried it off. Yes, that is dry. And we're not finished yet. I decided to add more on to this page to make it look a little bit more like a butterfly. Can you see it? Do you see it? I took out a black paint pen and started outlining what I saw as the butterfly. I could be crazy and you might not be seeing what I'm seeing, but I felt like it was so clear that I had accidentally made a butterfly that I just had to emphasize it. My God, it's a butterfly. If you've been following my channel for a while, you may know at this point that I have a slight fear of butterflies. I'm underselling it, like a actual fear, like I run away from them. They scare me. <laughs> there is a bit of a qualification to this. I am not afraid of cartoon butterflies. The cartoons are fine. In fact, I actually have cartoon butterflies all around my bedroom on wallpaper, and they don't scare me at all. But butterflies in the flesh, the real life ones, absolutely terrify me. I think my real fear of butterflies comes from their wings and how thin they are and the idea of them hitting against my arm or going in my mouth. What? Like those two, just worst case scenario, no. 
We first discovered I had a fear of butterflies when my mom took me and my family to a butterfly garden. If you don't know what that is, basically it's a place where there is a lot of butterflies. For context, as a kid, I was very well behaved, especially outside of my house. I was very quiet when I left the house, so I would not be screaming for no reason. Generally, this is supposed to be a very peaceful experience. I'm five years old, and I'm running around like a lunatic, hitting butterflies, screaming my head off, until the people in charge kicked me out of the butterfly garden. And that is how we learned that I am indeed afraid of butterflies. <laughs> to add some details to this butterfly, I used my white Posca paint pen and added some little speckles all over the wings as well as lines on the body. Butterfly wings are symmetrical, so even these little white speckles are supposed to be symmetrical across both wings. I tried my best, they're small dots, so it really was just not gonna happen for them to be exactly symmetrical. I signed my signature in this random little circle, as well as outlined the circle and gave it some shadows. I also outlined this random circle. I took out a yellow Kelly Art marker for the background of this page. I wonder where I got the inspiration for this background from. <clears throat> Some of the black did spread to the background, but I kind of liked it. It looked a little bit like a shadow. And here is what the final page turned out looking like. I really like the way this page came out. I know it's not a perfect butterfly because the shape is a little off, but I do really enjoy the idea that I made this out of paint drips and I wasn't even trying to make a butterfly and it just ended up looking like that. Moving on to the next page, we're doing draw lines with your pen or pencil. Lick your finger and smear the lines. For this page, I took out my pencil because I follow directions, well, most of the time, and I made a quick outline. Bear with me because what I'm drawing is a little bit of a weird choice. It did involve lines and some finger licking. Never saying that again, but I did lick my fingers a couple of times and schmear. Full disclosure, I did not lick my fingers too much. I did it a couple of times and decided that I didn't like the way it looked. At this point, you might be a little confused about what I'm actually drawing. Believe me, so was I. I was attempting to create an optical illusion. I initially did light shading before I started to darken things up. Once I started darkening things up, it made some things fall back and some things pop out a little bit more. This is actually the first time I've ever tried an optical illusion like this at all, so go easy on me. But basically, from the top, it's not really supposed to look like anything. But then when you tilt the camera to the side of the page, it's supposed to look like there's a giant crack or chasm in the page that you could fall into. At least, that's what it's supposed to look like. I used my eraser to clean up some lines, as well as darken things up for a third time. I felt like darkening it up for the third time really made things pop out. And here is what the final thing turned out looking like. Here's the thing, I feel like in some parts it does look like a crack that you could fall into, and then in other parts it doesn't really? Is this perfect? No. But I do feel like it does look like a crack in the ground in some places. I don't know, I think I've been looking at it too long. Can you guys see the optical illusion or am I out of my mind? Moving on to the next page, we're going to do press leaves and other found things. For this page, I took to the outdoors. I went outside and started to collect, Oh. I poked my finger with a rose. Yes, they have, they have thorns on those. I decided to just take the petals from the rose so I didn't get stabbed again. I moved on to some leaves from a random bush. I also took some flowers from this lavender flower. No idea what this one is, but I took a petal. I took another leaf and I went back to the lavender. Almost got attacked by a bee. 
This is a giant weed outside my window, but I like its leaf. I took this leaf as well, dropped my found things inside, and went back out for more. I found this yellow flower. We've got a runner. Found it. I'm just realizing now I don't know any of these flowers' names. Is that a peony? I don't know. It's nice. This pink flower, this leaf, this red flower is super cool. So I got some leaves, and we're back with all of the flowers and leaves that I've found. The next step in the pressing process is to place them on the page in a way that I thought looked artistically pleasing. I think that looks pretty good. And then I took out some packing tape and taped everything down. It was actually quite difficult to tape everything down exactly how I had placed it on the page, mainly because, well, leaves and flowers are three-dimensional, and it's actually very hard to press them flat with a piece of tape. Generally, the tape will hit a piece of the flower or leaf and then move the whole thing into a totally different position than I wanted it. And some of them had, like, static that it would just, like, fly up. Like, when I put this piece down, look at that, that just totally moved. But I finally got everything taped down as best as I could, and I cut off the excess pieces of tape. In some parts, I did leave extra tape and folded it over onto the back side of the page. Once I was done cutting the tape, I pushed down really hard just to make sure every piece was taped down. And here is what the final thing looks like. I know that this is not my typical Wreck This Journal page. I didn't really draw anything or paint anything. I know it's shocking, but I actually wanted to follow the real prompt this time because I'm interested to see how how these pressed leaves and flowers look over time. I think this page could be a really interesting and cool page to look back on when I finally finish Wreck This Journal and do a flip through. And here are all three of the pages that I did for this episode of Wreck This Journal. If you guys want to see my other Wreck This Journal videos, I do have a playlist linked with all of them. I also recently released my own prompt journal called Draw Your Journal, which is basically like a diary but with drawing, and I make videos about those if you want to look. Look at, at those. Flipping to the page that says make a mess and clean it up. First things first, let's take out our pink paint and squirt that all over the page as messy as possible. Really rub it around there. I eventually did totally cover this page in pink, but I did make the process quite messy. You'll notice this paint is very bright. It's actually my neon craft smart paint. Trying to remove this sticker. I'm taking out something that is quite random. I saw this in the store and immediately bought it, even though I had no purpose for it. I just love googly eyes. I love the sound that they make. I'll stop. I'm using my hot glue gun, and I'm going to be creating some characters using these googly eyes. Wouldn't it be so fun to make a drawing with the eyes moving? On the left side, I've put my eyes, the googly, googly eyes. The eyes are looking in all different directions. They might even be quite messy. And then on the right side, the eyes are very evenly lined up in rows. Taking out my Artistro paint pens, and we are creating just fur balls. Okay, so this page is gonna take some explaining. My sister is a teacher, so this is something that's like really present on my mind. But the first thing I thought of when I read this prompt, make a mess, clean it up, was actually kids at recess when like they're having just a blast and everything is everywhere. You have one person tripping, someone hurt their finger, someone hit their head. <laughs> and then the teacher is like, everyone get in a line, clean up time. And then you have the kids on the right just like standing there like they're in trouble. It's definitely abstract because these are just like fur balls. And even though this is definitely not my best piece of work, it only took 20 minutes. I had so much fun creating this page. I love the googly eyes, and I had a lot of fun just coming up with the expressions of these characters and their placement on the page. As I've said before, especially with prompt journals like Wreck This Journal, it's really important that you have fun while you're creating the page. It's like, what's the point of even doing it if you're not having fun? Not every piece of art has to be this beautiful masterpiece. Not everything has to be the best thing you've ever created. As long as you have fun making it, that's the whole point. 
Look at their little faces, look at the eyes moving around. I can't, I, I just love this page. And here is what the final page turned out looking like. I know that this is not my best work, but you know what? Sometimes your funnest work is actually the best one in your heart. And that's, that's how it feels to me. I hope you guys like this page as much as I do. I know it's obviously not like this like crazy masterpiece, but it was fun to make. Just a reminder, today is one of the last days you can use my code BELLA10 to get 10% off of my Teespring store. The sale lasts until the end of Cyber Monday, so be sure to check it out. Moving on to the next page, we have draw lines using abnormal writing utensils. Six spoons, twist ties, combs. I went with plastic utensils because the prompt said writing utensils. So I went with actual utensils. Taking out my neon craft smart paints. I don't know if this was supposed to be a transition. Very unclear, I'm too tired to figure it out. Adding some printer paper behind these pages because I am preparing to add a lot of paint to these prompt journal pages. They really should not have this much paint, but this is what I decided to do. The art for this page went in so many directions that it's gonna be a real journey. Me explaining my thought process here, it's a real wreck. The prompt says to draw lines. And initially I saw the ribbing in this knife with the lines it was drawing. And I was like, okay, that kind of fits the prompt because the knife is making lines, you know? It's subtle, but there, there are lines in there. As I started to create these very abstract lines, I was feeling like it was becoming so messy and I just didn't like the way it looked. But honestly, looking back at it, I feel like I should have just left it like this. There are lines, it's an abstract painting, but I felt it was boring. <laughs> Total snooze fest, I just didn't like it. So I was thinking and thinking and thinking and thinking, and then I was like, aha, let me, let me add some things to the bottom of this prompt and I know what I'm gonna do. I need more paint. It's truly painful to watch. I felt like I had already fulfilled the draw lines part of the prompt because there were lines all over the background from the knife. So at that point, I decided, let me focus more on the abnormal writing utensils. Let's use them all. I'm gonna use the fork and the spoon and create some flowers on top of the lines. This idea quickly went south. I mean, honestly, it just looks really bad, and I knew that in the moment. But also, I decided to embrace the idea of wrecking the journal. Something I really appreciate about you guys is that you let me post videos where I show my whole art process, and sometimes I create things that I don't necessarily like, but I had fun making. Oh, wow. Okay, that is a lot of paint that I'm removing. But yeah, Wreck This Journal is one of the few types of videos on my channel that I don't really have to take the art so seriously. And a lot of that has to do with you guys. I really appreciate that you guys have really embraced the idea of wrecking the journal and creating art that looks bad, but was fun to make. This is so much paint. It just was becoming really a wreck. I attempted to dry that off before adding even more paint. I still can't even believe it watching it back. I added more paint for the leaves. So crazy. No one should add this much paint to a piece of paper. This is just not reasonable. Because I felt like the lines were then covered up, I decided to add even more lines around it with my paint pens. I also felt like for some reason I didn't have enough lines, so I crossed out draw lines and instead wrote paint using abnormal painting utensils. But you know what? I disagree with my past self. I did fulfill the prompt because there were a lot of lines with those knives in the background. I mean, the thing is all lines. This page is probably my messiest page in Wreck This Journal. There is just so much paint. I did use abnormal writing utensils. It's actually very hard to create a good painting with plastic utensils, believe it or not. So I don't know, this is the best I could do with that. Up next, we're turning to a page that was actually already started by my sister Alina. Trace your hand. And the hand there is actually my sister's. I guess we have the same hand size. I gave this to Alina for her 16th birthday and she never completed it. 
I'm taking out my fine liner pens. I really like these because there are so many colors. If I had started this page myself, I probably would have outlined my left hand because I'm a righty, but my sister Alina is a lefty, so she outlined her right hand, which made me have to draw with my left hand initially, which is why this outline is so messy. Instead of covering up what Alina had already done, I decided to embrace her previous work and work around it. So I outlined the hand in rainbow colors. After that was done, I also took out my Artistro paint pens. Get out of the box and this bottle of gold paint. This is my second time using this paint and I thought I'd give it another try. I gotta say, for metallic paint, this is definitely more dull than I was expecting. It's just not very shiny and this was like a five or six dollar jar of gold paint and I don't know, I guess it's just not my favorite. I'll have to find another metallic paint, I guess. After finishing up the gold hand, it was time to focus on the outside. I wanted to make some of the lines thicker than other lines. I also wanted to create some variation. So some of the lines actually ended up being polka dot lines. I honestly really like the polka dots. I don't know what it is about that, but that really brings it together for me. Lastly, I used my white pen to create like, I guess this is kind of like a henna. I was kind of going for that, but I was also just trying to fill the space with a pattern. The plain gold hand was just not doing it for me. I felt like it needed a pattern there, and that is why I added these lines. I'm pretty happy with this one. Honestly, it was fun to make. I realize that all three of the pages that I've done in this episode are not like elaborate masterpieces, but I still had a lot of fun making these pages and I hope you enjoyed the journey of wrecking. The first page we're doing for this episode is called Wrap Something With This Page. I have taken out a bunch of wrapping paper materials and we are first starting with the pink and white striped wrapping paper. Kind of looks like a pink version of the American flag. How patriotic. I'm cutting off a nice section of this wrapping paper using my scissors and then I'm performing various wrapping techniques. It's very sophisticated. I folded things in half. I cut off some of the back paper so that it wasn't too thick. And then I took out my caliber tape, not scotch, huh. And I taped some of the edges so that they were nice, crisp, folded lines. I wanted to give the effect that this page is a wrapped piece of paper without actually wrapping the paper. So that is why all of the edges have nice folded lines. Wreck This Journal pages have rounded edges, so I did fold each of the edges and make sure it lined up exactly with the page. Now that the left side of the wrapping paper is all folded, I used a glue stick and glued it to the page. That's looking good, and now I'm going to make some folds on the bottom of the page and the right side of the page before I glue everything down. I did create a pocket on the right side for my tissue paper. So this yellow tissue paper is going to go in the pocket that I have created. I just folded it into various triangles and then stuck it in the pocket. And now it's time for my shooting star wrapping paper. I only needed a small amount of this, so I did cut my large rectangle in half, and then I began folding this into a square. The reason I'm doing this is because I want this to look like a present. To do that, I needed some ribbon. So I took out my three ribbons that I have chosen for this and started gluing them together. I realize this is a weird decision, but for some reason I felt like I really wanted the green ribbon to be on top of the purple ribbon and the blue ribbon to be on top of that to create one super ribbon. I don't know, that was just what I wanted to do. I felt like it and I did it. Bold and brass, I know. Sorry, I'll stop quoting SpongeBob. One day, maybe. Anyway, I taped the ribbon to the present to make it look like it was a present. And then I tied a nice little bow with the ribbon and glued it on top of the present. You'll notice that I kept the right side of the ribbon uncut. It's very long and I glued the present into the page knowing that I was going to curl this ribbon and glue it in a nice way on top of this page. So I took different parts of the ribbon and glued it into place so that everything would stay put. 
So yes, this page is three-dimensional. It is very thick and definitely makes my Wreck This Journal a little bit harder to close now. I noticed the tissue paper looked a little messy, so I went in and manicured it. I also took out these little tiny white bows and glued them on the page just to make things a little bit more fun. Yes, my glue gun is disgusting. I found this yellow backing for thank you cards that I got at the Dollar Tree, and I thought it looked nice stuck right in there with the pocket. And here we have the final result for my wrap something in this page page. Fully functional with a working pocket. Good for storage. I realize that this page is very thick and definitely makes my Wreck This Journal a lot bigger and harder to close, but honestly, that's kind of the fun of it. I really like the way it turned out. Let's move on to the next page. I chose this next page kind of at random, just opened the page, and it landed on this. Chew on this. This chewing hole was actually not done by me. It was done by my sister Alina, the original owner of the book. So, that's gross. As soon as I saw this page, I had an immediate idea that I began sketching. Whenever I think of chewing on paper, which is honestly not often because I do not chew on paper, but when I think of someone or something chewing on paper, I immediately think of a dog who ate my homework. After I was finished sketching something that incorporated Alina's weird chewed page, I then began using my Posca paint pens to color in the pages. The paper I'm drawing here is kind of weird. Most paper is white or a cream color, but I decided to make the paper look like it was an antique kind of look to it. Almost like we have a nice pirate scroll of a map or something. I don't know. I just wanted it to look a little bit different. I wanted to use some colors other than white. The dog is eating some very old homework. That's all I can say. I don't know where he found this homework, but he appears to be some sort of time traveling dog. Okay, yep, I got the story. Here's my take on it that I'm just coming up with right now on the spot. There's a blue dog. He's a time traveling dog, meaning he can go back in time and forward in time. At the moment, this dog has traveled back in time to the 1800s, grabbed a little boy's homework, and then traveled back to the future, to the present day, 2022. Except his papers are now old and decrepit and look like they're very brown and antiqued because he's eating the homework of a little boy from the 1800s. What? That or he's just eating some brown paper. Anyway, after I finished the shading on this time-traveling dog that is eating a old piece of paper, I added some highlights as well, and then I moved on to the eyes. I made the eyes these giant black holes in its face and added some eyelashes, which I think helped a lot. The dog was supposed to be cute, but he's actually a little creepy. And I honestly don't usually like creepy things, but this dog, I'll give a pass to. I think he's actually pretty cute. I really like that the paper kind of gives off some pirate vibes. It's almost like he is a dog that is aboard the deck of a ship, and he has found some old scrolls and started eating it. I don't know, I'm coming up with a lot of storylines here. Bottom line is I really like the dog, even though he's kind of creepy, and I enjoy that I was able to incorporate Alina's chewed part of the page in a fun way. Let's move on to the next page. For the next page, I also kind of chose it at random. I just opened the book, closing my eyes, and got the prompt, glue random items here, i.e. things you find in your couch, the street, etc. I found this piece of paper. It has a backstory. As most of you guys know at this point, I am engaged and getting married. Whenever I say this, I get a few comments of people that are very shocked. They believed I was a 12 year old when indeed I am 27 and I'm, I'm getting married. Anyway, I had my bridal shower a few weeks ago and I thought, you know what? I have a lot of stuff laying around from the bridal shower and the wedding invitations. Not that band-aid. I don't, I don't know why I decided to use a band-aid. As I was saying, I do have a lot of envelopes from my wedding invitations. These were my RSVP envelopes, so I am getting a lot of those back right now, and I thought it would be nice to incorporate those into the page 
and create kind of an homage to my bridal shower and my wedding invitations. On the outside of my wedding invitations, I did glue some paper doilies, so I took some of those and put them on this page. My sister, Alina, is my maid of honor, and she planned my whole bridal shower. It was totally a surprise. Well, kinda. The actual party was supposed to be a surprise, but then my aunt accidentally ruined it. I already knew about the party because I just know that surprises are happening, but I was gonna pretend that I didn't know the surprise happened, but then it got ruined and then it wasn't a surprise anymore. But the details of the party was a surprise. <sighs> I digress. What I was trying to say is my sister and I have very similar taste, and she decided to make the party daisy-themed. These daisies were all over the tables, and I took some of them and glued them into the page. After I was done gluing all of this wedding-related stuff into the page, I took out my glitter pens. I felt like the page was missing something. At first, I started drawing some flowers with the glitter pens, and as I looked at it, I was like, no, I don't think this is really what I wanted to draw. The flowers look really nice, but they're not really doing it for me. And then it hit me. I need a cute face on this page. There are so many flowers. And what goes with flowers? Some really weird, awkward bees. Mm. So the first two I drew were kind of a mess and scary. But this bee right here... This is my favorite bee. Oh my gosh. I think I want to do a whole nother drawing with just bees. I hate bees in real life, but this one is just so cute. Look at his little face. He's smiling and he's like, I'm just a happy bee. He wouldn't sting you. I have another bee in the top left corner. I like that one. He's kind of cute. And then I drew one more bee right here and eh, I don't know. I could have done better, but he's fine. This page and the wrap presents page were both very junk journal type of pages. I don't know if you guys have seen junk journal videos, but basically it's something like this where you glue random items and it's like a scrapbook. The pages are very thick and it's very fun to look at. Sometimes junk journal pages look a little disorganized, but when you look at it as a big whole picture, everything kind of goes together and it's very fun to create. When it comes to this kind of stuff, I've actually made a New Year's resolution to only do videos that I feel like doing. And this week, Wreck This Journal was just calling to me. Cut through several layers. I've been getting in the habit of just closing my eyes and flipping to a random page when I do prompt journals. So this was chosen totally randomly. <laughs> Typically when I do wreck this journal, I like to leave the prompts very open-ended and not really interpret them the way they may have meant to be interpreted. However, for this page, I actually just straight up interpreted it as cutting through the black side of the page. With all different shapes. Well, they're really not specific shapes. They're more misshapen shapes. What are they called? Irregular polygons? Is that the correct word? I think it is. What? Now, I did throw a heart and a star in there somewhere that you'll be able to see eventually, but the rest of them are irregular polygons. I did this mostly because it was really hard to cut them in even shapes. It was like vaguely approaching impossible. Anyway, once I had cut all of my shapes, I took a separate piece of paper, measured out how big I needed it, and then took out my weeks old lime green paint that I have covered in saran wrap, as well as my teal. I decided to create an ombre from teal to lime green. I'm doing this because I want this to be the background on which my shapes will be placed. I enjoy the way this ombre came out. I really like teal and lime green, the way it flows into each other. I used my heat gun to dry it off. After that, I'm taking out my matte decoupage, which was very hard to open. This is embarrassing. I did get the lid off eventually, and I put a nice coat of that on top of the paint. I did this for two reasons. The first reason is I want to seal in the paint. But the secondary reason is when I use this with my book, the decoupage will act as a glue on the back side of the page that I've just created all of my shapes on. So now that my cut through several layers page is basically glued to my colorful painted page, I'm going to take out my matte decoupage again and paint it over the top of this. This will seal everything together and it will look very nice. 
Okay, so this is what it looks like now. I have a lot of excess printer paper that needs to be cut off very precisely. I have to say, my tiny Cricut scissor is actually really fun. I love it. It's so small, but also so sharp. Now, I was gonna do the other page, but then I realized the back side of that is the tear this page out page. Put it in your pocket, put it through the wash, stick it back in. I was feeling actually quite destructive today. And usually, if you've watched my other Wreck This Journal videos, I'm not really that destructive. I typically misinterpret the prompt on purpose and make something look nice. But today, I was very interested in destroying things. So I have taken the ripped out page and I'm just wetting it in my sink. I, I don't have time to run it through my wash in my pocket and then ruin the wash potentially because I've got paper everywhere. No thank you. But I did put it in my sink, unfolded it while it was still wet, and then I realized, you know what? No, this needs something. I took out my set of ink permanent markers and I've decided to just create a very simple design. And then I decided, okay, after I put this design on this wet piece of paper, I'm gonna crumble it back up, stick it in my sink again, and then see what happens again. We're getting really, really crazy here, guys. Getting wild. Things are getting wrecked. This, this right here is the, the face of destruction. No, I mean, if you can't already tell, I don't really embrace the wreckingness. It's just, it's very hard for me to be like, oh, wow, let me take this piece of paper and chew on it and then spit it back out and then I'll just like stomp on it a bunch and then, wow, beautiful. I'll keep this book forever. I've added some color to the sopping wet piece of paper, crumbled it back up, and then stuck it back into my sink to... Wash it. I squeezed it a bunch of times until I felt like, yes, this is disintegrating enough in my hands that it will not look like I did nothing. So we're gonna very slowly uncrumple the piece of paper, and there we go. We have a rainbow treasure map. I dried that off with my heat gun, and then I took out my decoupage. I put the decoupage onto the page first, and then stuck my crumbled piece of paper on top, and then I took my decoupage and really piled it on. There's a lot of decoupage on this thing because the paper was very wrinkly, obviously, and I wanted to make sure it was really going to be stuck on there and not fall off. And here we have the final set of pages. Essentially, this is two pages in one because I did two different prompts at the same time. Here are my thoughts. The page on the right with the shapes, I really like that one. I love the black and the blue and the green. The page on the left is objectively disgusting, but at the same time, it was really fun to make. And that's something that I really enjoy about Wreck This Journal. You're making things that don't necessarily look pretty all the time, but they're fun. Let's move on to our next prompt, which is make a paper airplane. Here's the thing, when you read this prompt, it's objectively obvious that you should be ripping this page out or cutting it up into a million tiny pieces, folding it until you have a paper airplane, and then sticking that paper airplane back in the book somehow. But I had just finished the page where I had to do tear out this page, and tearing the page out I think broke my heart a little. So I decided, you know what, no, I'm not gonna put myself through that again. I didn't want to rip out any more pages, and I thought, you know what, when I look at this, this looks like a runway with for planes. You know, like a plane airport runway. I think we all know what I'm talking about. <sighs> doing some finger painting here. This is the part where I was like, you know what, should I make this white? I feel like the lines on the runway are white, but at the same time, I wanted some colors. So I was like, you know what, no, no, we're gonna do yellow. The lines on the road are definitely yellow sometimes, and I feel like I should definitely know why that is. Why are they white sometimes and yellow other times? Oh wait, it's cause, okay, yellow is when they're going in opposite directions, and white is when you're both going in the same direction. As someone that drives and should know the rules of the road, that's actually vaguely embarrassing and mostly dangerous that I didn't know that off the top of my head, but I think we're all gonna move past it together. Okay, off of the runway and into the sky, except my Posca paint pen ran out of ink. So I had to take out this paint instead. So I was painting this page, minding my own business, when suddenly I realized, oh wait, the other side of this page is you guessed it, another page that we have to tear out and crumple. Why are so many of the Wreck This Journal pages meant to be torn out? 
And on this one, I said, you know what, fine, I'll tear it out. I'll tear it out because you're going to encounter this again where you're going to have to tear it out. And then you're going to be like, I don't want to tear out something that I just painted on. So I painted on the other page. And now we can all be happy. I am going to take that crumpled piece of paper over there and use it for some clouds. So I'm very carefully uncrumbling the crumpled piece of paper, flipping it over, and then I realized that on the white side, you can actually kind of see the blue through, which I thought was really cool for clouds, because then you'll have some white, some blue, and it's gonna be an interesting effect since it was crumpled. I stuck it on the page and now decided I need one extra thing for this page to really come together. An airplane for our runway. So I'm sketching out a cartoon-like airplane that will have a pilot in it. He's going to be adorable, don't worry. Once I've sketched that out and then erased it so that you can't see it anymore, I took out my colored pencils. I've got some real pencils in there, but most of them are just Prismacolor Premier colored pencils, and I started coloring in my airplane with a red color. I started with my darker shade. This is not the darkest shade I used, but it's one of my darker shades. I also added an orange color because I want it to look like this plane is flying into the sunset, the yellow side of the page. So there's gonna be some yellowy effects on the front part of the airplane. For the very front of the plane, I have one of those little propeller things that go on cartoon planes. I don't know if that's on a real plane, I know nothing about planes, but this is what I imagine a plane probably looks like, kind of. After that, I moved on to decorating the little animal that is flying this plane, the tiny pilot. Yes, your eyes do not deceive you, that is the beginnings of Chip. Chip is one of my older characters, he is a cookie dough mouse. Typically, Chip is inside of a cup, but this is a rare occasion where we're seeing him leave his cup. Apparently, he actually can do that. After I had finished with the colors, I added some highlights to Chip's airplane and his little eyes, cut it out, and it's time to glue everything together in our book. So I'm taking my decoupage and I'm sticking my clouds into the page. And then once that's there, I'm putting a lot of decoupage on top of the pages. While it's wet, I'm sticking Chip where I want him to go, covering him with some decoupage. And here we have the final result of this make a paper airplane page. Well, technically this is actually two pages in one because I did complete the tear this page out and crumple it page, but the clouds are all we'll remember of that. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I will see you next week for another one. Bye.